All right, now when we're talking about sick sinus syndrome, this is going to be very classic for an elderly patient. Whenever I think about sick sinus syndrome, that's the first thing that comes to mind, you know, before anything. It's usually going to be presented in an older patient, and it's due to age-related degeneration of the SA node. That's very classic. So in the first example with AFib, we're talking about the pulmonary vein ostia, left atrium, and then we talked about atrial flutter, which could be in the right atrium, usually in that circuit, kind of around the cavotricuspid isthmus, was the area that we were referring to around the inferior vena cava. Here we're talking more towards the superior vena cava, right? More towards the top of the heart, where the SA node is at. So if the SA node, where our signal originates from, if that has some kind of you know, pathology where the signaling is impaired, that's going to cause a downstream effect to everything uh, you know, distal to the SA node, which is pretty much your entire electrical cardiac conduction system. Now, the other thing that can happen is you can have an iatrogenic case where maybe they're not an elderly patient, but maybe they're on beta blockers or calcium channel blockers or digoxin. I just told you what all of these things do. They have pretty significant effects at the AV node, but they can also exert effects at the SA node, right? Beta blockers, right? Beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, in general, they're going to inhibit your L-type calcium channels, right? And these are going to be responsible for depolarization in pacemaker cells. And so for that reason, you can actually impair your signaling of your SA node or your AV node by using these medications, okay? So it's almost like you're over-treating. You're, you're causing a pathology because of the treatment. And again, it's important to understand these mechanisms uh, to really understand what's happening because that's usually how the questions get asked. But that's why beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and then digoxin, because it causes stimulation of the parasympathetic nervous system, can also lead to sick sinus syndrome. Now, the presentation here, very classically, it's going to be a patient that has bradycardia. Remember, classic presentations for atrial flutter and AFib are going to be tachycardia. Here, this is going to be more of a bradycardia in general. These patients, usually what's going to happen here, let me just draw this out for you. Okay, so you have your P wave, QRS, T wave for repolarization. And you know, then you have your next P wave, QRS, T wave for repolarization, right? Everything's normal. But then you have this long stretch where you generate a P wave kind of late, okay? So you generate this P wave later than you would have expected, right? Normally the P wave, you have you know, a PR interval here. Here your PR interval is really, really small. The P wave gets delayed. So that's the first thing you'll see. You'll see this delayed P wave, okay? So delayed P wave. And then on the next beat, what will happen is you'll actually not see the P wave at all. And you'll just see a QRS complex and then your T wave. Okay, so then you'll have an absent P wave. So this is very classic for six sinus syndromes. So you have the delayed P wave followed by a dropped P wave. Okay, so that's what this is saying here. And so this is known as a sinus pause. So in other words, because of some defect here in the SA node, remember the SA node is primarily responsible for that P wave. Because the SA node isn't working when it's supposed to work, it's taking a little bit longer for it to function. And so here what happens is there's no SA node working at all. It takes way too long to kick in. And so the AV node says, you know what, I'm going to take over. And the AV node just generates an impulse that causes this contraction eventually in the ventricle. So the AV node is basically taking over at this point saying, hey, SA node, you're taking too long. I'm going to act as the pacemaker now. Okay, and so that's called a junctional escape beat. Okay, where essentially at the junction where the AV node is at, it's generating the impulse. It's taking over in this moment because the SA node is not generating anything. It's just slowing down essentially. That's why it's called sick sinus syndrome. The sinoatrial node isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing. Now, what can happen is after this, sometimes you can have periods of tachycardia, okay, because all of a sudden now things are kind of out of, out of sync. And so the SA node might start beating faster than it's supposed to. So you have these episodes where the patient will get really low heart rates and then get really high heart rates. And that's called tachycardia bradycardia syndrome, very much associated with sick sinus syndrome. The other thing you'll see with these patients is typically when they do some kind of, you know, exercise or some kind of test, you know, whether it's an experiment or if you do like a stress testing with these patients, their heart rate doesn't increase enough uh, to compensate for exercise. And so sometimes this is called chronotropic, right? Chronotropic is referring to the heart rate and then incompetence. So chronotropic incompetence is referring to the heart, not, the heart rate really not compensating enough for what's expected, in, you know, in exercise, for example. Okay, so in general, not a lot of management questions on step one, but just be kind of familiar with some of the stuff. If they're on a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker, you know, in, in a board question and they ever ask you something about what to do and 
they have sick sinus syndrome, you definitely want to take them off of these medications because that would be making it worse. The patient doesn't have symptoms, usually you know, you don't do anything, but in situations, in board questions, where patients have really low blood pressure and their heart rate's really low, for example, you can give them atropine. And atropine, remember, is an anti-muscarinic. So atropine is doing the opposite of the parasympathetic effect. It's actually gonna cause the heart rate to go up, right? So atropine is gonna help bring the heart rate up. So that's why atropine is given. And then you can pace the heart. So if the heart rate gets too low, a pacemaker will pace the heart. So if the sinus node isn't working at all, the pacemaker can take over and pace the heart on its own so the heart doesn't stop beating, right? So that's what a, a temporary cardiac pacing does. And then eventually, in the long term, you can put, get them a permanent pacemaker. You can also put them on beta blockers. Now, you might be saying, Dr. Aviso, that doesn't make any sense. If I was supposed to take the patient off of beta blockers, right, if they're having symptoms, why in the long term would I put them on beta blockers? In the short term, right, your heart's beating too slow usually in sick sinus syndrome, so you want to eliminate the things that would make it beat slow. In the long term, the patients are at risk of tachycardia, bradycardia syndrome, where you start having really high heart rates, really low heart rates. You take care of the low heart rate by giving them the pacemaker. You take care of the high heart rates by having them on a beta blocker. So ideally, the heart rate is in between where it's supposed to be, you know, 60 and 100. Okay, if it gets too low, the pacemaker kicks in. If it gets too high, the beta blockers are there. So that's the concept.